Yo, what's going on guys? It is Fox United here. Welcome back to a brand new video for you guys today here on the channel. Today, we have got the final set of our F1 2020 My Team Driver Ratings. Now, I'm a little bit late to the release of this video. Um, I've been out and I've come back and obviously they've actually come ahead and released them. But, we're going to get straight into it. So, in today's video, we're going to be looking at McLaren's Driver Ratings. Now, of course, we've seen all of the teams now, apart from McLaren. And if you are, again, I'm just going to quickly uh, explain this, uh, the starting points. Obviously, if you are new uh, to my team uh, and all the news and you're not quite sure what's going on, I'll quickly explain it to you guys uh, before we move on into McLaren. So as you can see, here is our prime example. So for F1 2020, each driver has now got their own specific card uh, in the game. And of course, uh, it's going to be rated very similar to like FIFA, you know, and their ultimate team system. Uh, and there's going to be four key stats which they're going to be rated on, which is going to be experience, racecraft, awareness, and pace. They're going to have a contract cost, a salary, and then a buyout as well. So there's a couple of things in there uh, to take note of. Now, how it works. So if we've got the categories, which are all by here. So starting things off with experience. The higher the experience, the score will help players collect a greater number of resource points used in game to buy car upgrades. The lower that is, they'll have less experience, which means they're not going to be able to get you as many resource points, which means your car is going to upgrade slightly slower. Racecraft, a higher racecraft score will allow the drivers to unleash more effective overtakes. The better your racecraft is, the more that your teammates are going to be able to make their way through the field. The worse it is, not only may they may not be able to make the overtake stick, but they might actually make an error during the overtake and crash each other out. Next up is then awareness. A higher score will mean that the driver is less likely to lose control of their car when the going gets tough. This could be going from wet uh, to dry, from dry to wet, or just any other scenario like the tyres going off. Uh, any form of issues with the car, DRS problem, engine problem, anything like that, they'll be better on that front. And then pace, quite simply, the higher the pace score, the more rapid your driver's going to be. Max Verstappen, an example, he's got 96 pace, he's going to be really, really quick in a race. Albon's got 83 pace, he's going to be slightly slower during a race weekend. But um, let's get straight into it then, we've got all of the drivers here, so we'll quickly go through them. So we've got Verstappen, it's a 90 rated card, and Albon is 79 rated. Perez is 85 rated, Stroll is 78 rated. Uh, both the Alpha Tauris are 80 rated. Hamilton is 94 rated, Bottas is 90 rated. Ricciardo is 87 rated, Ocon is 80 rated. Both the Williams cards then, so Russell is 75 rated, uh, Latifi 64 rated. Ferrari of uh, Leclerc, 86 rated, Vettel, 89 rated. Uh, we've then got Kimi Raikkonen is an 87 rated, and then uh, Giovinazzi, 73 rated. Haas of... Um, Kevin Magnussen is 78 rated, Grosjean is 80 rated, and lastly we have got the boys McLaren, and here they are then. So we have got Carlos Sainz is an 82 rated card, and Lando Norris is a 79 rated card. So let's have a look at them then. So Carlos Sainz has got 65 experience with 88 racecraft, 81 awareness, and 84 pace. Lando Norris has got 52 experience, 89 racecraft, 78 awareness, and 80 pace. So He's actually very close in terms of comparisons between himself and uh, Carlos Sainz. Uh, Sainz having a lot more experience compared to that. Uh, he's got a little, Norris got a little bit better racecraft, which I'm a bit, you know, in terms of overtakes, Sainz is a better overtaker in my opinion. Um, Sainz to me is a better driver in my opinion. Uh, Sainz has got more awareness and he's got more pace, so... I mean, the racecraft is not too bad because it's actually a difference of one. It depends on what the difference is. Uh, and then the awareness and pace... He beats them in that front there. So there's the McLaren stats. Let's go compare them to some people then. So Science then is an 82 rated card. Uh, let's see who's close towards him. Uh, Ricardo is quite high up actually. Let's have a look at Sergio Perez. Perez, right, Perez is 85 rated. So he's got more experience with 78. Um, Science then has got 88 racecraft. Perez has got 91. He's got 80 awareness. Science has got 81. Science then has 84 pace. Perez has got 86 pace in there. So Perez is a better in pretty much all stats. I think science has been done kind of harshly, you know. Um, and like I said, uh, probably next week, I'm going to be releasing a video where I'm going to be redoing every single stat and what I think it's going to be. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, I think science and Norris have been done really harsh here. I mean, Norris is a little bit of a difficult one because, of course, he's only done one season in Formula 1. And when they take real-world data, what we don't know is what year the data's been taken at. I've had a lot of comments coming in uh, saying, uh, for example, you know, Bottas's rating is outrageous. Vettel's rating is pathetic. You know, Albon is only one ahead of Stroll. Like, how does this work? What we don't know is what year they've taken the rating from. Is it solely last season? Is it solely, you know, 2019 and 2018? We don't know what it is. If I was going to predict... I think they would have done it based off last season because all of these cars, apart from Latifi, uh, were racing last season. And that's the best way you're going to get your race card stats. You know, if you start comparing it over many other seasons, you know, uh, you know, for, like Hamilton has been in the Formula One for a lot longer. Um, 
than, you know, like Esteban Ocon. So you can't really say that Ocon's going to be anywhere near higher rated because his experience is going to be so much lower. So I think there's a few things to look at here in terms of how when they've actually done this. They never actually said when they decided to do it. They just said with these scores based on real world data. Uh, they didn't put it any other way. I mean, they've got my team functionality. I could find out what that is. Let's have a little look here and see when they've got that. Oh, that's just going to be the announcement of my team, isn't it? Yeah, okay. That's that's That really hasn't helped me out. Thanks, Formula 1. Really appreciate it. You're uh, you're amazing. And uh, my thing's frozen. That's great. So, yeah. Unfortunately, it, it hasn't actually changed on that front. So, yeah. That's a bit of annoying. But um, then what we've got here is we've got the full driver ranking. So, in this... I believe what it's showcasing is all of their stats combined uh, in terms of, you know, the experience, racecraft, awareness, and pace, all of those combined to then give your final overall stats. So if we have a look at it then, so Hamilton leads the way um, with all of his stats combined ahead of Valtteri Bottas. Verstappen is third. Charles Leclerc is in front of Sebastian Vettel. Despite Vettel having a big increase in experience, Leclerc has got more racecraft. He's got a little bit more awareness and slightly less pace. So... How Leclerc is third, I don't understand that. Unless they've done this based off championship standings. Yeah, they have. They've based it off drivers of the drivers' championship from from last year. That would make more sense because Hamilton won ahead of Bottas for Stepp and then it was Leclerc Vettel. Sainz just beat Gasly. Albon was behind them. Okay, don't take the four driver rankings into consideration here. It's based off the drivers' championship last season. That makes more sense. Um, but there's the four driver rankings there. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section down below. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new here as well. We've had a lot of new people subscribe to the channel recently, which I really do appreciate since these videos have been coming out. And uh, next week, I'm going to go ahead and release my videos uh, where I will basically redo these stats because there are a lot of these cards on here uh, that I personally disagree with and I think need to be altered. Um, and I'm going to alter them and see where we come out at. So yeah, until then, I'll see you next time. Take care all. Peace.